in Paul's first letters, letter to the Corinthians, he refers for a while to all of the spiritual light that we have that has come to us through the record of all God's deeds before. In this case, he's talking about all the way God called the nation of Israel into being, how he delivered them out of Egypt and slavery, how he fed them and kept them and brought them through the wilderness, how he brought them into the promised land. And from all of these examples of God's great faithfulness, he applies that to us. And he specifically gives us, for difficult times, he gives us four commandments. And by the word commandment, I'm meaning here, these are not just good advice. He's telling us four things that as Christians we need to do. And the, the illustration he's drawing here, don't fall away like the Israelites did and displeased God in the wilderness multiple times. He's using all that history of Israel as an example for us not to follow. So, in chapter 10 of 1 Corinthians, after reminding them, and I'll read just a few verses um, at the beginning, Paul says in 10.1, I do not want you to be unaware, brethren, that our fathers were all under the cloud and all passed through the sea. And all were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea. All ate the same spiritual food. All drank the same spiritual drink. For they were drinking from a spiritual rock which followed them. And the rock was Christ. Nevertheless, with most of them, God was not well pleased. For they were laid low in the wilderness. Give some more examples which will... Um, Skip over to 11. Now these things, he repeats, these things happened to them as an example. And they were written for our instruction, upon whom the ends of the age have come. Therefore let him who thinks he stands take heed lest he fall. No temptation has overtaken you, but such as is common to man. And God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you're able but will, with the temptation, provide the way to escape also, so that you will be able to endure it. Now, in these few last verses, there are, I think, four commandments. One, in the 11th verse, he said, the ends of the earth have come on us, the ends of the ages. Um, and he said, these things are written for, for us. So all that went before while God used it with him. He has gathered all that together, and we live in what Paul is saying is the final age. Now, I'm not necessarily speaking of imminent last days, but we live in the final dispensation. We can say this, every single person who's alive today, 2021, we have the brightest and greatest amount of spiritual light that any group will ever have. The, the Bible is finished. All the truth that God intended to give us has been written out. All of his, act, his acts are recorded. Just the end of time is left. And so there will never be any more light, any brighter light than we already have. That is an amazing statement that we live in the brightest glow of spiritual light that humans will ever receive. We have more light than all those who went before us. Therefore, we're to realize that privilege and not shrug it off, take it for granted, let it slip through our fingers. Realize the privilege of all of the light that we have. All of the people in the New Testament that are written about as yet had nothing but the Old Testament to read. You go back before the Old Testament was written. Noah walked with God, trained his three sons and daughters-in-law 
and encouraged his wife. Together they raised their family to love God. Ended up being the only eight people saved out of the flood. They didn't have a Bible. They didn't have a church. They didn't have a youth pastor. They didn't have a children's ministry. They didn't live stream the services so they could stay at home and watch football later. Noah had heart religion and little light. You and I have more light than Noah had. He didn't see Jesus. We're past that. We look back and see what Jesus came for and did. So we have no excuse. Realize our privilege. Second commandment is to recognize the peril. And the peril is in verse 12. Let him that thinks he's standing beware lest he fall. <clears throat> now the word thinks that he stands does not mean someone who is just imagining that he's a Christian or calls himself a Christian when he really isn't. I, I think I'm okay. He's, he doesn't mean that at all. The word has a note of certainty about it and, sh and surety that I standing, I know I'm standing, is how one translator translates it. Standing, I'm standing. Then what's interesting, he said, beware lest any fall from standing. A, that tells us the very real peril of falling that we must avoid and beware of. And the word fall is interesting too. It is an active word as opposed to passive. So it doesn't mean accidentally slips, gets knocked down, but the word falls active. It's something that it implies I, I do something to fall away. I walk away from faith. I, through action of my own, move myself away from a standing on the rock. So it has to do with choice. Beware, there's the peril. So recognize the privilege that we have of all the light we have. And then we are to <clears throat> be clearly aware of the peril. Remember the peril. Third, we're to resist self-pity. Now let me explain that. Verse 13 says, No temptation has overtaken you, but such as is common to man. What does that mean? He's reminding us that lest we start feeling sorry for ourselves and imagine that we have it worse than others or maybe worse than most, he said, you're not going through anything in your temptations that your brothers and sister Christians throughout the whole world are also going through. Don't start feeling sorry for yourself mope around, think you have it bad. Um, there are plenty of people who are in the same boat or worse, and they're brothers and sisters. They love God too, but God is allowing them to experience even worse than you. So resist the temptation of self-pity and of focusing just on me. We have the um, voice of the martyrs, calendar hanging on our kitchen wall by the refrigerator and there are pictures there of families who lose their homes who are fleeing and living in a refugee camp someplace for the sole reason some of them have been maimed had hands cut off some of them have been blinded some of them had children watch their parents be slaughtered right in front of them and the sole reason for it all is they follow Jesus. Well, as we sit in heated and air-conditioned homes in freedom and drive in cars to wherever and have enough, you've probably heard this, anybody who has change on the nightstand that night that they lay their heads on the pillow is richer than 97% of the people in the world. 
resist self-pity. The temptations, everyone's going through them. And then the final commandment, rely on the promise. And what is the promise? Another wonderful one. God is faithful. In what sense? He's faithful. He will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able to bear. But he will make a way out, is what the word means, of the temptation. Somehow, that by faith, by resistance, by the strength to do that, God always gives us a way that we may be able to endure it and come out better and in the end, unscarred, not um, yielding to a temptation and falling away. So realize the privilege we have of great light. And we know with great light comes great responsibility. Two, we are to recognize the peril. Don't turn a blind eye to it. We can fall, but we don't have to. Three, resist any temptation to self-pity, to thinking I have it worse. I don't. Four, rest on God's rock-solid promise. God is faithful. He knows I'm in the temptation. It couldn't even get to me unless it got by him first. And he allowed it. And with that allowance, he's right there to extend his hand, to strengthen us, that we may be able to endure it. That's then four commandments to deal with the current against which we're walking, the temptations we'll face, and the opposition of a wicked world, and the deceitful, um, fiery arrows that an enemy will send our way. We can stand through it all because God's faithful. Father in heaven, you've given us all we need. To live, Peter said, godly lives in this world. And so there just isn't any excuse for us to let our hands hang down and start to mope and feel sorry for ourselves and give in and quit because, Lord, you promised. We've got an awful lot of light. We saw so much of Scripture that we know and your faithfulness in it. We know that you are faithful and you promised to supply us everything we need to resist the enemy. Give us the victory, we pray, through faith and self-discipline. In Christ's name, amen.